In recent decades, millions of people have drifted away from Jesus and their Catholic faith. Sadly, many may never find their way back. I'm Tom Peterson, and I believe that God has called me to use my background in media to be a catalyst in the new evangelization. Our organization produces inspiring and creative evangelization messages that have helped lead hundreds of thousands of inactive Catholics, converts, agnostics, and atheists home to Jesus and His Holy Church. Join us as we travel across North America to bring you stories of heartbreak, redemption, and transformation as the Holy Spirit leads His people home. God has an extraordinary plan for each of our lives. He wants us to spend eternity in heaven with Him and bring as many people with us as possible. This is Catholics Come Home. Now, I welcome you to my home to hear their amazing stories. Welcome to Catholics Come Home. In this episode, we'll meet an accomplished president of an annuity firm who lives half of the year in Napa, California, and the other half of the year in the Puget Sound area of Washington. After the priest scandal, he left his Catholic faith and would wait outside in the car after dropping off his wife at Mass. But recently, he returned to the church and rapidly became on fire for the faith. Like everyone else in this series, today's guest came home to the church with the help of Catholics Come Home and responding to the call of the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to meet Bill Broche. Bill, thanks so much for joining us today. We're, we're glad to welcome you into our home and we're glad to welcome you back to the Catholic family. Thank you, I'm very happy to be here. I'd like to start with finding out a little bit about your childhood, your faith background growing up. So tell us more about your younger years. I was uh, born and raised in Idaho, uh, raised as a Catholic. My parents were very committed Catholics and raised my brother and my two sisters from day one in the Catholic faith. We never missed mass, uh, my mother would take us to confession on Saturday night, and she would say, I have you cleaned on the inside. Now we're going home for baths so I can get you cleaned on the outside. Good for her. <laughs> God bless our mothers. <laughs> That's awesome. So your family was faithful all during your childhood? My parents were, were completely committed their entire lives, and we were raised that way, yes. You talked about your mother's faith. What was your dad's faith like? He was hardcore. He, he believed everything about, he'd gone to Catholic schools, raised as Catholic, believed everything about the Catholic Church, and um, he, he was fully committed, and he lived to 96, so he had a nice long life, and he still went to Mass even at the end of his life. He never missed. God bless our devout parents. <laughs> yeah. They planted the seeds well. What stage in your life did you maybe start drifting from faith or decide to put it on hold for a while? Well, my wife uh, uh, was, is a very strong Catholic, never missed Mass, was committed to it. But when I was in my mid-40s, probably about the time the, of the priest abuse issue came up, I just, I just had to get away from it. And I, I was in complete conflict with the church and how that was handled. So I, I would take her to church and I would go do other things like go for a walk or whatever it is and then pick her up after Mass and we'd have coffee. <laughs> Did you miss Mass? You know, I would go with her. If she asked, I would go with her. I missed the connection, I think, mm -hmm. but at that time I didn't really miss Mass. I, I was very, uh, very angry with the church over, over that whole issue. So, so the anger and the misperceptions and what was inside of you kind of took a higher precedence than your family faith background and it kind of outweighed it. It did, you know, uh, I was an altar boy from early on and, and uh, I even was an altar boy in my 30s when the priest would need help and every priest I ever encountered was exactly who he said he was. They were all exactly what they're supposed to be. When the abuse came, I was, I was very disappointed in the, hand, the way the church handled it. So I, I decided to, to get away from it. Where do you live now, Bill? I'm very fortunate. <laughs> I live in Napa Valley. Wow. We live there in the wintertime, and Phyllis and I, and we have a home uh, beach house in the Seattle area in the summertime. So 
when the rains come to Washington, we go to California, and when the heat of the summer comes, we go back to Washington. You've got the best of both worlds. <laughs> we do, yes. Do you know anyone in the wine business? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we have, have deep fingers in the wine business. So. Wow, <laughs> can I come visit? <laughs> Happy to share, Tom, but you, can't, you cannot bring your own corkscrew. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> you have a very interesting career, what's that? I'm in the insurance business, I'm in the annuity business. Uh, my partner and I own annuity.com, which is a national annuity marketing company. We have about 500 agents wow. that work with us. So it's uh, a big company. It's a boutique. Uh, we're kind of a specialized boutique company, but we've been in business a long time. And uh, we've got an awful lot of nice people we work with. That's awesome. Did I see you on the cover of one of your magazines, an industry <laughs> magazine? <laughs> You did. I've been fortunate to be on the cover of uh, Wall Street Journal and wow. New York Times and many publications. Well, I'm going to want your autograph <laughs> after this show, that's for sure. I'm fortunate to have uh, been involved in Legatus for a number of years, an uh, organization for right. Catholic CEOs, so we're definitely going to be talking to you about that afterward as well. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. In this next segment, we'll see how this business executive's life changed forever. Lou Holtz came on television with the Catholics Come Home commercial, and it absolutely paralyzed me. I worked in pro baseball for a long time, and we play on Sundays, and it was an easy excuse. I took the easy out and just didn't go to Mass. When I was in college, I ended up having a lot of questions about my faith, and I ended up leaving the church. I might have gone to church, you know, at Christmas time, gradually quit going. Went through a divorce and um, ended up being a single parent. If I didn't have church or God, I, I, I would be back at that lonely stage, that trouble stage. Whenever you get anxious and worry about things, you just know that Jesus has it under control. When you come home to the, to the church, you're coming home to a Catholic family where people today just embrace you. And it's a place where I feel accepted for who I am. I feel alive, complete, and at home. I have a peace when I walk through the doors of the Catholic Church, like that's where I belong. If you've been away from the Catholic Church for whatever reason, we invite you to take another look. Visit CatholicsComeHome.org today. Bill, you were raised a faithful Catholic by strong Catholic parents and during your middle years, you kind of drifted away from faith and either took a walk or sat in the car while your wife was in church because you were disappointed with the priest scandals. What changed in your life? What caused you to take another look at the church? And if possible, how did Catholics Come Home fit into that? I had a wonderful long-term relationship with my father. And as we both aged and be became uh, older, mm -hmm. college football was our connection. My dad had played college football, and uh, football was really important to all of us. And on Saturdays, sometimes we'd call each other 20 times a Saturday <laughs> to, did you see that play, did you see that play? And that became the basis of our old, later in life uh, friendship or you know things of interest on it. We were both always Boise State fans. And I, we, ca we called Boise State our beloved Broncos from day one. But myself, I had always been a fan of Lou Holtz, and I followed his career from Arkansas through all the way to the end in South Carolina. One afternoon, I was alone on a Saturday watching football at my California house, mm -hmm. and it was October of 2013, and Lou Holtz came on television with the Catholics Come Home commercial, and it absolutely paralyzed me. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I, I, was, I was stunned. I was in a bad way or a good way? <laughs> well, in a what the heck is going on way. <laughs> <laughs> and what emotions did that stir? Or how did you feel when you saw a coach talking about faith in the Catholic Church? Well, someone had been my idol. I, I just couldn't believe it. And I thought, what in the world am I doing? And uh, the next day, uh, we went to Mass. Phyllis and I went to Mass the next day. And that led into uh, how I'm currently involved in the church and how Phyllis and I are currently involved in the church. I remember when you told me your story, you said that night you were thinking about it so much, uh, you didn't get much sleep, did you? No, 
No, <laughs> no, it was it was a it was a lightning bolt to me, and I I I was just absolutely stunned as a not to keep repeating that. But I to keep. Did you start going to church, you know, regularly uh, right out of the shoot, or did it slowly progress where you you started a couple of times and then it led up to a more fervent faith? You know. Um, we went that next Sunday, and then I thought, heck, I'll go to daily Mass. And I started daily Mass, and I, I rarely miss daily Mass. If I'm traveling, I will. And uh, so I've, I've just, it, it's gotten stronger and stronger every day and every week. And, and to where going to Mass now is, is nearly the most important thing in my life outside Praise of God. my family. At one point, uh, you started going to Mass two or three times a week, you had told me before, and then ended up going on a daily basis. Right, right. How did confession play a part in this early return to the church? Because I, I know you had been away from confession for over 10 years when you were away from the church. When did you go back to confession, and what were your thoughts when you did? You know, uh, many of my friends uh, who are non-Catholic say, you don't know, need to go to confession. You can confess to God yourself, but that's not true. You have to have a complete examination of conscience and you have to have someone there that, you, that can accept that confession and forgive that confession and, and bless you. I finally did, it had been maybe 15 years, and I finally said, oh, the heck with it. And I, I went to see our priest and said, here's all I can remember. <laughs> I hope it's good enough. I do go to confession often now. I think it's the grace of confession is, is overwhelming to me. We agree. In fact, we started a website, goodconfession.com, a few years back because we believe it's the most underutilized sacrament it we is. have in the church, and yet Christ wants to forgive us through that priest in persona Christi, the priest in the person of Christ, with his abundant mercy, but we rarely take as much advantage of it as we could and should. So we, we thank God that you felt that pull back to the church and back to the sacrament right. of reconciliation. I'm with you, I think it's uh, powerful and we should all go um, should. Uh, very often. Tell me more about your faith journey and what other things you started thinking about at this point. Well, I had to have some vehicle or some way of having a daily, uh, a, a daily visit with, with the Lord. And so I joined the National Rosary Crusade. Mm -hmm. And uh, I now say the rosary every day. And I've said the rosary in some pretty weird places traveling. And, we can uh, say the rosary anywhere, <laughs> right? We can say it anywhere. <laughs> and one thing that has happened to me uh, is I, uh, I was embarrassed for a while, and, and then I thought, gee, I can't let anybody see this if I'm walking on the streets, and now I don't care. I'm, awesome. I'm all in on it now. What do you know now about your faith that you didn't know 15, 20 years ago when you had drifted? That's simple. You know, it, uh, it comes down to just one thing, you have to have faith. Mm -hmm. And that faith is, I've, I, have, I have completely stepped off the edge on it. And that's exactly how I feel about You're all it. in now. Uh, <laughs> I may have a toe still hanging on the cliff, but I'm all <laughs> in. <laughs> awesome. Soon we'll learn how Bill's rediscovered faith is yielding much good fruit simple fact that I don't hide it anymore uh, has allowed other people in our business world to not hide it either. So many of us carry such heavy burdens. You crazy! Deep within, we struggle. Come on, babe. It'll be fun. Because sin separates us from God. She's having a relationship with George. But thanks to the grace of confession, God compassionately listens, forgives, and sets us free. So if it's been a while since you've been to confession or mass, come home and experience a fresh start. Visit catholicscomehome.org. Bill, at this point in your faith journey, you're not only back at church, but you're going to daily mass and saying the rosary and confession has now become a central part yes. of your faith journey. What other ways has coming home helped your life? I think it's helped a, a lot with my wife, Phyllis and me. We, have, uh, we are practicing Catholics together. We attend Mass together. We approach things from that 
focus, and uh, I think it's helped a great deal, personally. You have a devotion to the rosary. You go to daily mass. How do you feel internally, and does that make you want to share your faith at all? It does. I have been uh, reticent, I suppose, in the past to do so, but no longer. I wear my Catholic faith on the outside now, and uh, I have lots of opportunities to bring it to the forefront. Would you say you're happier? Oh, much, much happier. In what ways? What has changed inside of you? Well, because my personal walk with Christ now is a real walk with Christ, and I know that I'm looking for other ways to expand that through maybe stepping out into the light a little more and maybe becoming using some of the tools that, that the Lord's given me to help other people in other areas. Uh, we have always been involved with uh, helping food banks and raising money for food banks, things of that type. Fantastic. And we're looking at ways to expand that and what, what to do next, really. So with the Lord at the center of your life, this has now become your main focus as opposed to just maybe helping people once in a while. You're now uh, impassioned about helping people. Well, my, my wife is at the center of that. That's awesome. She's at the center of making that happen, and I'm now her assistant. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's good when us guys don't control everything. That's a good thing. Um, what other good fruit has come in your life in terms of the new evangelization and you sharing and spreading your faith? Have you helped anyone else? You know what I found out is that uh, my business partners and agents, as I've always kind of hid my uh, belief in Christ, uh, they kind of hid their belief in Christ. And most of them are not Catholic, but they are committed people. And as I have opened up, they have opened up. And so it's been a much more open sort of relationship, even though no one preaches or no one, it's, they know that, that I've accepted the Lord and I know they've accepted the Lord. And it's helped a lot in communication and it's helped a lot in, in how we get along and how we make things work. The world and the forces of the world want us to buy into that lie about politically correct uh, speech and so forth and don't bring up God at work or in our environments. But you and I have now found out, because my path back is not completely different than yours, that sharing the faith at work and sharing the faith out in public actually helps people. Uh, it's what God commands us to do through our baptismal call and through the sacraments to go and make disciples of all nations. And if if people who have been given the talent, as you have, with uh, a great eloquence and speech and a, a strong business mind, don't spread the faith, who's going to, huh? No, you're, you're exactly right. And just the, the simple fact that I don't hide it anymore uh, has allowed other people in our business world to not hide it either. And it's not that we are all evangelizing at business meetings, it's the fact that they know who I am and I know that that we have the same beliefs. Which is evangelization in and of itself. It doesn't always have to be so forceful or out front. You have some good fruit that has come from it. You've invited a few people to church. Tell us about that and what has happened. Well, I have. I've invited three people. Two have come. And um, I guess I'll work on the other guy. But <laughs> There you go. <laughs> but this last weekend, I was in Boise with uh, seeing my, my boys. And uh, neither one of them had been to Mass in 15 years and so I invited them to go to St. John's Cathedral and they both did. That's awesome. And they, they both really enjoyed it. As a matter of fact, my youngest son said, gee, I, I really miss this. And so they are older and they're old enough to do what they, but they saw, saw me doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think it helped them realize that they, this is something to think about. So I have my fingers crossed on it. We men are called to be the spiritual leaders of our family. You've now taken that role, and two of the three people you've invited in the uh, business world or in your personal life have come back. Your two sons you invited, and they came back to Mass and said, boy, this is better than you know, yeah. what we remember, and they're happy. So obviously the key is invitation. And we've learned with Catholics Come Home that 90% of the people uh, that our parishes and our, our partners in the um, diocesan world talk to say, I came back because you invited me. Just that simple, isn't it? And I think my attitude about it has changed. I finally, I finally stepped out of the shadows in terms of it to make and, and be, have become more open about it. And I think that's uh, fear of not being 
criticized or however we all go through, you know. And fear is not from the Lord as we've learned. <laughs> so we have to be bold as St. Paul was bold in sharing the faith, indeed. but always do so with humility and love. In, huh? in, indeed, indeed. How else has returning to a strong Catholic faith, that was part of your DNA in your childhood. God bless your parents for doing instilling those seeds. How else has coming back to a strong Catholic faith helped your career and your business life? Being a, a Catholic has become as important as being a successful insurance agent. Maybe that's not how... Or more uh, important, right? More, it has, but it's, uh, it was always on the back burner and now it no longer it is. And the, uh, our business is, is booming, you know, and it's booming for lots of reasons, I suppose, but it's, it's booming because of, I think, our attitudes toward things. And, and God is blessing you God because you've put Him first and all the other stuff falls into place just like He promises, right? That's what I was going to say, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can borrow it. Um, how have the sacraments enriched your life in the last few years since you've returned? To be a successful practicing Catholic, you have to receive the sacraments, and confession is absolutely one of them. I attend Mass for three reasons. One, I, I, I want to listen to the Gospel. I now reread the Gospel to try and get as much message out of it. I am there to witness the consecration and I am there to receive communion. And those are the three driving points for Mass for me. Amen. I downloaded an app on my phone from the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops where the daily readings pop up every day. Right. And I find, and I'm sure you probably find the same thing, when I read that and then go to daily Mass, I really do hear it and pay attention more because our minds wander they do, and we're not they? all there. And boy, the more we can reinforce the Word, the better it is. Last thing I want to ask you today is, what feeds your faith do you have any favorite saints or devotions? But what inspires you to go even deeper uh, to become a saint someday? The Virgin Mary. My devotions are to her through the rosary. And, uh, and when I pray specifically, I pray to her. I am uh, continuing with the National Rosary Crusade. And so that's, that's how I relate, relate to that prayer and I relate to that more than anything. And when I ask the Lord and I, uh, for help and for attaining eternal life for myself and my family, I, I do pray to the Virgin Mary for it. You're one of Mary's boys, that's a good <laughs> thing. And she always does one thing, points us to her son Jesus. So how can we go wrong? Bill, I hear you're gonna walk the Camino. You got into shape. We wish you God's blessing and luck on that pilgrimage. And we're so glad you've uh, come home to our Catholic family you. and you have a strong faith and you're helping to spread the new evangelization. God bless you. Thank you very much, Tom. Want to become a better evangelist? The best place to start is in your own home. At Catholics Come Home, we are often asked what can be done to help keep others from drifting away from the faith in the first place. By becoming a stronger spiritual leader for your family and within your parish community, you can be more equipped to evangelize those you love and help lead and love others toward heaven. As Pope Paul VI noted in his apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Nuntiandi, there should be found in every Christian family the various aspects of the entire church when our domestic church, our church of the home, mirrors the actions and life of the entire church, our home can become a place of evangelization and an atmosphere of holiness. What are some ways we can reflect the big C church in our little C domestic churches? First, evangelization. The church exists to evangelize, and so does the domestic church. Both within and outside of the walls of the home, Spiritual leaders recognize that their chief task as baptized Christians is to share the gospel and the love of Christ with their own family members and with everyone they encounter in the parish and the larger community. Second, the sacraments. As the Catechism of the Catholic Church explains, the seven sacraments touch all the stages and all the important moments of Christian life. Spiritual leaders keep themselves and their families close to the sacraments and encourage others to do the same. Third, adornment of the church home. If you were to walk into a vibrant, evangelizing Catholic home, you would know right away. Like parish churches are adorned with beauty that lifts one's heart and mind to God, so these domestic churches remind you of God's presence in their homes. 
through religious art and icons, statues and home altars, and other beautiful Catholic adornments. Fourth, sacramentals. Sacramentals are sacred signs instituted by the church. Through blessings, which hold a pride of place among sacramentals, and other forms and articles of popular piety, like crucifixes, rosaries, icons, statues, and holy water, the domestic church is grafted more fully into the life of the church. Fifth, tithing. Jesus spoke a lot about money in the Gospels. Just read the parables. Giving of one's first fruits to God is critically important for spiritual leaders through the tithing of not just their treasure, but also talent and time. The domestic church is made a more active and evangelistic cell within the greater church by generously giving back a portion of their own blessings from God. Last but not least, prayer. Strong spiritual leaders are dedicated to prayer as the church is dedicated to prayer, especially through assisting at the celebration of the Mass, the pinnacle of the church's prayer life. Prayer animates everything that the church is and does, and so spiritual heads and hearts try to cultivate that same animating prayer life in their own lives and families and with those whom they are evangelizing. If a friend spent time in your home and then spent time in your local parish church, would they see a resemblance of activity and lifestyle? For more practical strategies and inspiring stories to help you become a stronger spiritual leader and a better evangelist to those in your own home and within your community, I invite you to visit catholicscomehome.org and to pick up a copy of my book, Head and Heart, Becoming Spiritual Leaders for Your Family. Here's your chance to get active in the new evangelization. Visit the catholicscomehome.org website and click on the Shop tab. Here, you can order a Catholics Come Home book, evangelization cards, a DVD of the Evangemercials, or a car magnet. If you or someone you know has come home to the church thanks in part to Catholics Come Home, let us know. Or if you have a comment, question, or want to support our mission, email us at info at catholicscomehome.org or write to us at Catholics Come Home, P.O. Box 1802, Roswell, Georgia, 30077. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Bill, a highly successful business president, left his Catholic faith after the priest scandal. He would simply drop his wife off at Mass and wait in the car or take a walk. But after seeing the Catholics Come Home Evangemercial, featuring legendary coach Lou Holtz during a football game, Bill had a profound conversion that night. Now, Bill and Phyllis attend daily mass, pray the rosary every day, and Bill is not shy about evangelizing others. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Catholics Come Home. Please keep Bill, Phyllis, and the Broche family, and all of us at Catholics Come Home in your prayers. Remember to fulfill your role in the new evangelization by helping to love somebody to heaven. I've got love.